Stoichiometry, the numbers game in chemical reactions can be daunting, but it's nothing more than using correct proportions to predict how much of something is needed or how much of something is going to be made, much like a recipe. Using baking as an example, let's take this brownie mix and try to explain stoichiometry through simple proportions. So let's start with ingredients. I've got the pack of mix, which weighs 567 grams. That number will be important later in calculations. The other ingredients that I'm going to add to the pack are one quarter of a cup of water, half a cup of oil, and one egg. So these will be our reactants or ingredients. Just like an experiment, we have a procedure to follow. We'll preheat our oven, we will combine all of our ingredients, we'll bake for 45 minutes, and that should give us 16 perfectly baked brownies, as long as we stay true to this ratio. Oh, nutrition facts. Oh, don't look at that. If our recipe was written as a chemical reaction, this is what it would look like. You may also find it helpful to interpret the chemical reaction and incorporate it into a tabular format. Let's do this. And there you have it, 16 perfectly baked two inch brownies. Well, there were 16. I'm not proud of myself. Like the movie, get it? Using incorrect proportions could have resulted in one of two things. A dry mix like this, which would have given us a paperweight brownie. No amount of dunking in milk is gonna fix that. Or a syrupy mess. That's not good eats. Let's change it up. What if you wanted to bake twice as many brownies? Here's our original recipe. To bake twice as many brownies, you would also need to double all of your ingredients. Double the reactants gives you double the products. Incoming curveball. The limiting reagent is the ingredient or reagent that is in shortest supply and therefore limits the amount of product that can be made. Let's assume here that for our double batch, we only had one egg. How would that change things? Recall that to make 32 brownies or double the batch, we needed to double all of our other ingredients. That means needing two eggs, so having one wouldn't allow us to make 32 brownies. The egg would be the limiting reagent here. Can we use an alternative measure for our ingredients, such as mass? We can actually weigh all of our ingredients, including the oil, the water, and of course the egg. All these units will now be in grams rather than in measurements of cups or units. We can use a tabular format again to summarize this information and show the equivalencies between the units. These equivalencies are also called conversion factors. Conversion factor is an equivalency of one unit amount to another, typically written in ratio format. So instead of cup units, we can actually write our chemical equation in grams. What would be the conversion factor for grams of mix and number of brownies? Going back to our equivalencies, we can see that 567 grams of mix would give us 16 brownies. We can write that in two ways, one with grams on top in the ratio and brownies on the bottom or in reverse.
you know he had to go there eventually. So after consuming all that sugar in the form of glucose, that combined with the oxygen you breathe will be burned into energy and carbon dioxide and water. Here's the chemical equation. Just as before, we can summarize this in tabular format. Note that the coefficients in front of each compound are acting as units known as moles. We can use alternative measurements such as mass as well, using the equivalence or conversion factors for moles and mass. The conversion factor for one mole of a compound is equal to its formula weight. The relationship between glucose and carbon dioxide is as follows. 180 grams of glucose as a reactant is consumed to produce 264 grams of carbon dioxide as a product. This can be used as a conversion factor in solving problems. Using that conversion factor, we're able to calculate that 540 grams of glucose yields 792 grams of carbon dioxide. Now that you've mastered stoichiometry, you can treat yourself to a delicious snack. But don't forget, when it comes to stoichiometry, you can't fudge the numbers.